gotta be honest here. After all these years, we've lost track of all the dumb, stupid, asinine, imbecilic things that WWE has done from a creative and booking television pay-per-view standpoint. Tell me I'm wrong. Please. Tell me I'm wrong in the comments. You know I'm not. I mean, you lose track. Like every time I t talk about something like this, I could talk about five things and then people will bring up in the comments or via Twitter, which you should follow the show on Twitter. They'll bring up five other examples. I'm like, you know, God, I almost damn forgot about those because there's so many of them. And what's truly terrifying about it is that more and more you find that the WWE is under the control of an out of touch, senile, lunatic madman. And that's what Vince McMahon is. He's a guy in his mid seventies, out of touch, senile, lunatic in his views and beliefs on things, and just flat out a madman, a control freak, a megalomaniac, and all those things. And for many years, that served to his benefit. It was a great thing for him. But now, as you get later in his life, it becomes less and less of an asset and much, much more of a liability. If you're a football fan, you think about Vince McMahon, perhaps, in the same light as, let's say, an Al Davis or a Jerry Jones, that at one point in time, they did really, really great things. And they're big names in their sport for their time. But then they hang on about a decade too damn long. And they take their brands, they take their products, their teams, their organizations down in flames with them. And a notable example of this, where you talk about being at the mercy of Vince's whims and impatience and senile sensibilities, is the decision to apparently break up the hurt business. Like, why in the hell would you do that? It's one thing if you say that you've got something really mapped out and planned out. It's one thing if you say, hey, we felt like this is the right strategy to take and we're going to do this with it and this with it long term and it's designed to help these other guys and put a more of a single spotlight on Bobby Lashley and MVP being associated with them. You, know, you, could, you could make an argument. You could make a case. If you knew that was the logic at play here, you got to be a goddamn fool and naive as shit to think that there is any plan here for any of this. This is just another one of those random whims that makes no goddamn sense that you just do and then you don't follow up with it. You don't really do anything with it. It wasn't designed to do anything. It was just because Vince fucking wanted to. And he doesn't have that golden Midas touch anymore to where you could say, well, that's going to work. It usually doesn't now, which is why the fuck the hell the WWE's in the damn shape that it's in. It's like the whim of, all of a sudden, Lana's going to be sitting there and doinking Bobby Lashley. But then she's got a liquor license. But then, ah, fuck it, it doesn't matter. Because she doesn't, because we dropped that, like, the Aaliyah Buddy Murphy story. You know, like, that was a thing. And then just did all this and nothing. Just dropped it. And sometimes it's called for. Sometimes that makes sense. And sometimes it doesn't really matter. But this whole foolish notion of Vince just being continually able to have this type of control to the level and point where there's no checks and balances and it's clear and obvious. You hear the stories. You, you can see it. It's evident. Like, you know it. It's just, it's been incredibly damaging to the product over the past 10 years and it only gets worse as the days go by. And breaking up the Hurt Business was stupid. Which brings you to the whole notion of what will be even more idiotic and ridiculous and that comes to this match between Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. You just put the strap on Bobby Lashley. You just did that. Just did that. Where you have a raw brand, a raw show, that isn't lighting the world on fire. Both from a creative standpoint and from a rating standpoint. It's a bit of a dumpster fire. So maybe in that way it's lighting the world on fire with its toxic fumes of stinkage and suck and shit. So instead of reinforcing the new champion and going in this different direction 
and giving him a real chance to run with it. Now, of course, because you're Vince McMahon, you got to screw everything the fuck up. See the build up to Bianca and Sasha. See the build up to Roman and Edge. And now we're going to force the fucking Breakfast Club killer, who's actually the epitome of the Breakfast Club, into that damn main event. Just can't help himself. Just can't let shit go. He's always got to sit there and stir the pot and screw shit up. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing anymore. From a creative standpoint, he doesn't. And what really frightens me about this is the thought of, like the thing that people have been talking about for weeks and months, frankly, is that, well, you're going to have Drew drop the title so that way he can win the belt at WrestleMania and get his moment in front of the fucking fans. Fuck that! This is not even just a piece to, like, hate on Drew. But shit, fuck that! Seriously! 2020 was his year! And it was a challenging time, and it's a tough spot to be in. And I don't envy him for being expected and being tasked with being the top guy on the longer show that has even more Vince control over it, so you know what type of dumpster fire that could be and having a limited quality of opponents to throw at him, even though you try to throw everything you can behind the guy, including letting him borrow Vince's fucking sword, and all the while trying to perform and do this shit in front of absolutely zero live fans. Like, that sucks. But, he's been given the opportunity. And after all of these years, all of this time, you've now made the decision and went with Bobby Lashley. To sit there and have Drew come back and win this belt so damn quickly would be stupidity of the highest fucking order. There is no logical business ramifications or rationale, excuse me, or justification for putting the scrap back on Drew. There just isn't. Once you go with a guy like Lashley after waiting all of these years to frickin' do so, especially when you look... There's a big difference that's obvious to everyone when it comes to Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley. Point being, you get a lot of Drews in that spot. You don't get a lot of frickin' Bobby Lashleys. You have to give him a run. You have to roll with it. He is a legit fat ass. Accomplished professional wrestler. Accomplished MMA fighter. You're not rolling in it with these types of guys. Bobby Lashley looks and feels like a star. He looks and feels and acts like a main event, a big deal, something that you were desperately, by the way, WWE, significantly lacking, some by your own design, and unfortunately now to the point of due in part to your own sheer incompetence. There is absolutely no justification or reason for having Drew McIntyre win that WrestleMania match against Bobby Lashley and getting that title back. There's none. Because then... The whole crap you did with The Miz was a gigantic waste of time because you didn't even incorporate fucking Bad Bunny in there. At least if you would have done that at some point, you could have made some sense in giving more justification for the match happening of Mania. But of course, they can't tell these multifaceted layer stories anymore. Bobby Lashley's that dude. He's that dude now. And as part of that, you've got to validate him. And you validate him by giving him a lengthy run, at least through the summer, with your world championship. And especially if you have the numbskull-ass idea to take the universal championship off of our head of the table, the tribal chief, Roman Reigns, because you want to put it on edge, which is the whole reason you put that fucking Keebler elf into the damn match anyways, is so that way Edge could pin Daniel Bryan, then you've already got one title change. There is no need for two. Furthermore, you could certainly argue when you look at the two major top guys, the world champions for each brand, there is absolutely no reason to take the strap off of either damn one of them. What do you gain by putting the belt back on Drew? What new stories can you tell? What interesting twist or flip or angle can you take on this? If you could make an argument that by doing this and having Drew win, it's going to create a whole different type of Drew McIntyre character and it sets you up for all types of different stories and so forth. Again, then that's a different conversation to have. 
Of course we know that's not true. And don't be the ding dong that says, well, you know, oh, they could. You've got to give them the time to let its story play out. Ding dong, gum dicks, WWE has done nothing to earn that benefit of the doubt. Why in the hell would you extend it to them here and now in 2021? Come on, man. And for the ladies, can't discriminate. Come on, girl. The fuck you mean? What the hell are you talking about? No. You got the closest thing you've got to Lesnar from a all-around legitimacy standpoint in terms of Bobby Lashley. Roman is legit in and of his own right, but it's different. Lashley has the professional wrestling background and the MMA background. Again, closest thing you've got to Lesnar. And if at some point in time in 2021, as you might get the fans back into a big you know, venue like here, you got it at WrestleMania. You might do it again, let's say, at a SummerSlam. Like, why in the hell would you not want to have Lashley as a champ face Brock Lesnar at some point in damn time? We've already been there with Drew. He had that moment. That's over. You've got several stories over several months that you could try and tell with Bobby Lashley as a champion. It is stupid. I'm not trying to rag or hate on Drew. It's just the reality. You put this title back on Drew McIntyre, there will be backlash and not positive backlash. Not the type of thing that you could spin into a win or a benefit for you. You're just going to risk pissing a bunch of fucking fans off. And you're going to risk alienating fans of Drew. Or people that might be on the fence. They're going to go on the other side. They're going to be like, well, of course they had to fucking serve up Drew. He's the chosen one. And now you got to give him his moment in front of 25,000 fans and none of that shit will fucking matter. It's horse crap. That's what it is. Once you went there, you have to go there. If you sit there and you have him drop the strap at Mania, and even then, if you have him win it back a month or two later, all you've done is wasted everybody's fucking time. And haven't the fans had enough of their time wasted? And frankly, a lot of the wrestlers had enough of their time wasted over the years. No. You need to go with this. You need to run with this. Imagine the logic or logistics of trying to justify, and I was huge on Kofi Mania a couple of years ago because of what it represented. Thought, you know, at this point in time, everybody in this fucking company could be a champion anyway. Why shouldn't Kofi get a run? And the guys gave him almost a half year run. If he can get almost a half year run, then why the hell shouldn't Lashley get at least the same? It makes no damn sense whatsoever. Who's more interesting as a champ? A babyface or heel Drew McIntyre? Or fucking Bobby Lashley? I mean, seriously. Who's the more interesting one? He's got MVP with them too. The answer is obvious. And ding dong, dumb dicks. If you say Drew McIntyre wasn't the bluest of blue fucks, is wrong with you? So they better not take that strap off of Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania. Because you know what? If they do, you know what I'm going to be about. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to do what will change absolutely nothing about the fact. I will come to YouTube and I will bitch and piss and moan and rant about it in my review of Night 1 of WrestleMania. And then I will take to Twitter as well and significantly voice my displeasure and join with millions of others in doing the same damn thing. That's right. It's serious. But seriously... WWE, don't do the stupid thing. There is only one right course of action here. Bobby Lashley must retain at WrestleMania, period.